Hello, friendly Denleys. Today we're sinking our teeth into the dark atmospheric realm of the 2003 movie Underworld. Underworld is a movie that broke into the werewolf vampire genre and was directed by Len Wiseman. Len Wiseman. The movie displays the harsh, centuries-long war between the vampires and the werewolves, also known as lichens. For some reason in this world, they're called lichens. I guess that's like a throwback to the mythological times of werewolves being lichens and lichens being werewolves. Either way, they're interchangeable, but I'll be sticking with lichens for this video. It features an intense and memorable performance by Kate Beckinsale as Celine, the vampire death dealer, which is a vampire that works to eradicate the lichen from the world. This film marked more than just a cinematic achievement. It was also the beginning of a romance between Beckinsale and the director, Len Wiseman, which bloomed sometime during this movie's filming. But don't get your panties too frazzled because they ended up getting divorced in 2019. Unfortunately, in this movie, we only get to see Kate Beckinsale in a plastic black suit and not Len Wiseman. I really don't think the underworld world could even handle that. Anyway, beyond the romantic backstory, the main Making of Underworld was an intense physical endurance test for Beckinsale. She was committed to bringing the authenticity to her character, often rehearsing for months on end to perform her own stunts. The film also stars Scott Speedman as Michael Corvin, a human who becomes ensnared in this war of the lichen and the vampires. He's just kind of caught up in the middle of everything. Stop the car! Back off! Okay. We also have Michael Sheen, who is the Lycan leader, Lucian, and Bill Nighy as the powerful vampire elder, Victor. You might remember Bill Nighy as Davy Jones in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, or maybe Michael Sheen as not being related to uh, Charlie Sheen, or maybe you remember Scott Speedman for his, uh, his role in this movie. Whatever the case, these actors are memorable in their own rights. The script was co-written by Danny McBride. Unfortunately, it's not that Danny McBride, it's this one. But this one introduced a fresh perspective on these iconic supernatural creatures and was instrumental in shaping the film's narrative. This Danny McBride, similar to vampires, is an immortal replica of a similar famous name. So this movie was filmed in the historic city of Budapest, Hungary, and used the gothic architecture to help highlight the dark undertones within the series. There's also transformation scenes of vampires and werewolves within this movie, and ooh, they are top notch. They mixed practical effects and pioneering CGI for the time to create these transformations that are actually pretty sweet. Despite receiving mixed reviews upon release, Underworld eventually built a loyal fan base to help build upon its series. Today we're delving into the heart of this supernatural saga. Whether you're a longtime fan or just discovering this dark universe, get ready for an in-depth exploration of the 2003 movie Underworld. The movie starts off in a dark, damp, and rainy night, as Celine mentions that the vampires are nearing victory over the lichens. Victory, it seemed, was in our grasp. That finally, they have killed Lucian, the head lichen. But as I said from the beginning, Lucian is kind of a main character in this movie, so that gives you a little bit of foreshadowing that he may not be fully dead. She goes on to explain that they killed Lucian over 600 years ago, but the remaining lichen aren't willing to die, and instead they don't have to wait for a full moon to transform, that they can transform at will whenever possible, making them even stronger than they were before. Celine, her partner, and the other death dealers' main goal is to eradicate these lichen before they become more powerful. That it's their role to try and completely eradicate eradicate any sign of lichen because they hate each other. She goes on to say that this is the end of an era that they no longer need death dealers because most of the lichens are already dead. That they're kind of placing themselves out of a job. She's a little sad and realizes that she has nothing to live for and kills herself. 
because I lived for it. Just kidding, she's a vampire. <laughs> People are following other people who are following a dude, which eventually leads them all down to the subway. One of the guys who's a lichen knows absolutely no personal boundaries. And then I'm assuming just like poops his pants with guns. <laughs> I should preface this with saying that this movie is extremely violent and pretty gory. So if you're not into that, uh, I don't want to say click off. Um, close your eyes. Just keep them closed for the entire video. I need that watch time, please. Please. Keep it on the background, please. All right, so more guns are pulled and Celine's partner is shot by some blue bullet thing that turns him into a mummy. Celine gets a little pissed and starts shooting too. Bacardi is there just hanging out, I'm assuming not sponsored, as the back and forth continues. Some bystander is shot and starts seizing up, but it's okay because we have somebody who's a first responder and starts doing CPR on her. At least uh, he does the precursors of CPR. So after getting their fill on the subway, they start running. Others are chasing other are chasing others who are chasing others. It's crazy, but at least everybody's getting their cardio in. Get that heart pumping with cardio. I really wish somebody would chase me so I could get some cardio in. We see our first transformation of the movie, the lichen turning into a werewolf. Which is actually, it's pretty good, I think, for 2003. Kind of top notch. I'm impressed. Whoa! Jump scare. <laughs> it's not that spooky. Anyway, Celine sees a blood trail and decides to follow it. She drops down like a boss and does a matrix style sixth sense move that allows her to dodge bullets and take out this lichen. I will say it again, like a boss. She decides to sextuple check this man by shooting six bullets into his head to make sure that he's dead. <laughs> Something tells me that she holds a grudge with these lichen. Almost like they killed her family or something. I hope they didn't do that. <laughs> She finds that the lichens were using these weird new bullets that glow blue. She has no idea what they are, but uh, just keep it in mind for later because they come back up. Anyway, she's chased by a lichen who she deals with by throwing ninja stars at it. Freaking ninja stars at it. It then cuts to two lichen who have transformed and are fighting each other. It looks like they're just messing around, like placing bets and stuff, having a grand old time. But then the leader of the lichen, who I'm just gonna tell you, it's Lucian, okay? Lucian is alive and this is Lucian. He tells them that they can't be messing around if they want to defeat the vampires. That if they expect to survive during this war, they have to be obedient. They have to be determined. They have to persevere. Piss! Taylor! Put some clothes on, will you? Yeah, seriously, put some clothes on. You can literally see their freaking pews. We have a serious problem. Celine enters the vampire headquarters, which is in this mansion, and it turns out that the lichen stole some military grade tech, which harnesses UV light to kill vampires. That's what was in these bullets. Harnessing the power of the sun. Ultraviolet ammunition. Daylight harnessed as a weapon. Bad. But. Celine goes on to say that the lichen horde that she saw was way too big for Lucian to not be alive. That they should track him down and kill him. But nobody believes her. And she mentions that Victor would believe her. Which Victor is in a deep, deep slumber. Victor would believe me. It's a waste of time, you know. What is? 
Well, I seriously doubt Victor would want you freezing to death in here, staring at his tomb for hours on end. We get to see a little bit of him later on. So this is Erica, and she's just there to kind of ground Celine. She's a little bit jealous that Craven wants Celine, and Erica just really wants Craven. Celine gets distracted by trying to figure out who this guy is as Erica comes back in to try to get her ready for this party. Celine zooms and enhances until she figures out who the lichen were after. Some very attractive human. He's attractive for a human. Who's attractive? Craven comes in to try and get Celine out to the party, and Celine says he should just bring Erica instead because Erica really likes him. Craven says that he wants Celine as a date and to get ready for the party because it is time. But Celine is too caught up in being immortal and trying to figure out who this guy is who the Lycans are, and why they're after him. Is Celine Batman? No. She's just a very good detective vampire, as far as we know. We are brought into the evil lair of some scientist who's trying to do something with lichen blood. He has a mental map that he's trying to figure out something, and he's also taking blood from humans who are tied up. I don't know what he's doing, but I don't like it. I'm just here to figure out if he's making any progress. Any progress? Let's find out. Negative. In the lair, they pull out the blades of this guy who has the deepest voice I've ever heard. No, I don't think so. I'm not sure. We're then dropped into the party where this guy is speaking about the bloodline. They want to keep their bloodline pure and are soon to awaken Marcus, who is an elder vampire, which they'll all awaken within two days. And all will be right in the vampire world, supposedly. We find out that the human they are tracking is named Michael Corvin, and he's in apartment 510, to which Celine kicks the Crikey. out of the door. Michael leaves work and then two cops show up and talk to his friend. The friend says that Michael comes and does his job and then goes home and he lives a pretty normal life. The cops are, I guess, not really satisfied with this answer, but that's fine because Celine is at his apartment snooping. Michael finds his way home when a very pissed off Celine asks the real question. Right Why are they after you? <laughs> Michael runs away, narrowly escaping Celine, as Celine is chased by Lycan. After realizing that she's about to be cornered by these Lycan, she pulls off one of the most boss moves ever, cutting a hole in the floor below her with a spray of bullets. Come on. Michael goes down on the elevator, but is quickly interrupted by Lucian, who gives him a nice little nibble and replenishes his health by grotesquely pushing out the bullets from underneath his skin. I said this movie was kind of gory. Just prepare for more. Exactly, Michael. What the heck is going on? Lucian seems to know because he runs after them like nobody's business, eventually jumping on their car and stabbing through the roof. Luckily for them, Celine thinks quickly and slams on the brakes. <laughs> During the whole ordeal, Celine is stabbed by Lucian. Michael's just trying to make sure that she's fine, saying that she needs to pull over so they can check out the wound. But she says she's got it all under control. Now shut up and hold on, I'll be fine. Spinning out, flipping, and falling into the water shows me that she did not have it fully under control. Michael thinks quick by shooting out the windows and pulling Celine up to the surface. He performs some life-saving CPR, and she comes back from the uh, d dead 
from the alive, from the undead. I don't know what vampires are. Are they dead? Are they alive? She's undead, I guess. Immortal. Eternal. Semantics. Can't live with them. Can't live with, without them. <laughs> Lucian meets up with the weird scientist guy because he was able to get a vial of Michael's blood after biting him. Lucian says that within two days, it's going to be a full moon and Michael will be looking for them at that point because he will be a full lichen. Soon he will be a lichen. Soon he will come looking for us. What the plans are from the beginning, we don't really know yet, but they want Michael for some sort of reason. He might have a mutation in his DNA strain that they could use for later. Either way, we touch on that more later. Later. I don't know what science experiment that was, but they're positive that Michael has the strain. Uh, we'll just, we'll go with it. I'm not gonna question it. Because Selene is a vampire, she was able to heal very, very quickly. Already completely recovered. Michael, on the other hand, has some weird dreams. He's starting to get Lucian's past memories and what he's dealt with because Lucian is the one that bit him. Successfully transferring over his memories to Michael. Boom, 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 boom. Let the gears spin. Selene and Michael have a proper introduction but Michael just kind of gets a little bored and falls asleep. Erica comes in and wants to know how Celine's new pet, Smart Pet, is doing. The whole house has been absolutely buzzing about your new pet. And mentions to Celine that Corvin wants to see her. Craven. Craven wants to see Celine. Michael Corvin is Michael, and Craven is Craven the vampire. Okay, hopefully my labels are right. Craven's dropping his balls in the situation by telling Celine that she shouldn't have brought in Michael to the house. That while Victor, the elder vampire, is gone, Craven's the one that's ruling the place. Celine kind of calls him out on his power trip and they part ways for a second as we get back to Erica. Erica notices the lichen bite on Michael's neck and becomes a cat and jumps onto the ceiling. <laughs> Meanwhile, Michael gets terrified too and jumps out of the window and then gets chased away by dogs. A very eventful series of events. Leave us! I don't think you can do that, Craven. That's kind of frowned upon here. Celine heads to the firing range as another friend comes up to her and shows her a new gun with a different magazine in it. These rounds have silver nitrate in them, making it ooze silver, which can successfully kill lichen by going straight to the bloodstream. Genius. All right, so this is a little convoluted, but I'm going to try to break it down easily. Lucian was supposed to be killed by Craven. Celine believes that Craven didn't actually kill Lucian and that Lucian is still alive. Either way, the elder vampire Victor believed that Craven killed Lucian, and that's all that matters. But Celine doesn't buy it. She thinks that Lucian is out running, which, come on, he is. We already know. Just put that in your. Well, if I had a pocket, just put that in your pocket. Craven and Lucian meet in the back of a car and Craven tells Lucian that he was supposed to be laying low, that what the hell was he doing trying to go after this human? Lucian grabs him by the throat and tells him that he shouldn't worry about the human. That's not his concern. The human doesn't concern you. And besides, I've laid low for quite long enough. <sighs> Lucian puts Craven in his place by saying that he already bled for him once. Lucian gave Craven immortality. Without me, you'd have nothing. You'd be nothing. Celine does some digging of her own into a library, an ancient book talking about vampires and lichens and their war with each other. Apparently centuries ago, Lucian led a lichen revolt against the vampires and Craven was the sole vampire survivor, giving everybody a detailed account of how Lucian was dead, that he had a certain skin patch of a brand stating that, hey, this is Lucian's brand that I took from him. Craven's lying about Lucian for some reason, which we don't really know yet. But Celine's starting to get onto the trail, sniffing it out. Yeah. 
Michael meets his coworker slash friend at the hospital and explains the situation to him. He's very impatient and short tempered and his friend really isn't having anything to do with it. Okay, so a full grown man bit you. Jesus. He was after me. And that woman, the woman from the subway. What woman? Haven't you been listening to me? She took me All right. hostage. All right. All right. He just wants to be treated with respect. Come on, Michael. I'm gonna help you get this all sorted out, all right? I'll be right back. Let go, Michael. Let go. Just calm down, okay? I'm gonna be back in a minute. That's a promise, all right? All right? So that promise does come to fruition, but not as expected. He comes back with two cops and Michael mm -hmm. busts out. So Selene hatches a plan. She's going to wake up one of the elder vampires named Victor. Please forgive me, but I desperately need your guidance. But in doing so, she's kind of breaking the code of vampires because she isn't eligible to actually awaken them. That's reserved for special vampires, which she's not. She decides that she doesn't really care anyway and bites her arm to make herself bleed. The blood drips down into Victor's shrunken, shriveled body, into his mouth, down his throat, and makes his heart beat. Because she's using her blood, she's also transferring all of her memories that she has to Victor. So she hopes that this will kind of help her case, that Victor can see where she was coming from, awakening him early. Please forgive me, but I desperately need your guidance. I apologize for breaking the chain and awakening you ahead of schedule, but I fear we may all be in grave danger, especially you, my lord, if left in your weakened state. I believe that Lucian is alive and well, here, now, in this very city, preparing to hit us during the awakening ceremony. Even more disturbing, that if I'm correct, it would mean that Craven is in league with him. She goes on to say that Lucian is still alive and that it's too dangerous to wait for the awakening ceremony in two days because they'll be weak and that's when Lucian will plan to attack. So awakening Victor now ensures that he can gain some strength and deal with whatever they have to deal with. It also exacerbates the situation because Craven is possibly working with the lichen.